All right, what's up, guys? Another podcast. Chance this time with me, Young Blood, newcomer. Um, it's super interesting for me to speak with him and find out how is it to get into the scene so late. Um, the first question is general one. I always ask it uh, everyone. How did you start playing Quake? And what is your age at the moment? Because that's interesting. Because usually younger people nowadays start different games, not not with the Quake or FPS shooters. So right now I'm 18. I think I I didn't really start playing Quake this time. It was more like I tested it out. But uh, an, an IRL friend who played the game, he put me on in like seventh grade or when I was in like thirteen. Just you know, said, "Hey, download Quake Live, come play it." And then from there, I kind of always knew. I always knew it as like a really mechanical shooter in the back of my mind. It wasn't until when Split Gate Competition ended, I think in like, it was like November 2022 when I started really playing it. I was playing a lot of like the quick live lightning gun duels because, mm -hmm. you know, my my focus was to develop better aim for the uh, next title that oh. they were developing, uh, the Split Gate developers. And okay. then from there, it slowly spiraled into that's the game I'm trying to focus and, you know, started being able to play duel and compete in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's interesting because that was one of my questions later on, but let's jump it straight away to that one. Uh, okay. Do you have any like um, aiming routine till nowadays or you just started with some kind of uh, sleep gate and maybe Kovacs or whatever to improve your aim or, or you are still doing those? Um, I mean, it's kind of a mix. It also depends on what I have done a lot or not done very much in like the last while. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, I'd say my main focus right now is just hitting as hard as I can in the regular game, right? Like, I've done all the hours of Kovacs and, um, and like, lightning gun duels and stuff that I really need to. Like, I don't... The more I do those, the less I get from it. Mm -hmm. And so now, if I can just try to translate putting that into the game itself, like in Duel and 2v2, that's where I'll get the benefit. But I still will hop on that from time to time. I've also done a lot of Quake Champions Unholy Trinity, so... Okay, yeah, that's interesting. There is two two group of people. One of them don't even try to improve their aim. They focus yeah. more on on the game. I think Rafa is even one of those guys who never really cared about aim. I I remember I asked him once in Quake Life because uh, during Quake Life um, it was very clear that Rafa aim is not not the best. Nowadays, mm -hmm. people tend to say that his aim is not the best. In my opinion, it's really, really on point. He hits every like shot he has to hit, so his his aim improved drastically. But he always kept answering the same question, same way that he that five percent here or there won't won't gonna it's not gonna make a change in the long run, like in a poker game or anything like that. So he he thinks he's uh, more beneficial with like tactical uh, mistakes and like uh, playing properly the game, etc. But yeah, but but that's cool anyway. Uh, I wanted to ask you, so you jumped to Quake Champions in 2022, right? Yes. Okay. And Late 2020. So now speaking of Jules, because you started obviously with Jules, because that was the QPL era and everybody played Jules at that time. And it was popular. I, I started with um, Lightning Gun Duels specifically. Yeah, but after that, but yes. you kind of switched yes. to, to Jules, right? Because uh, yes. there was no 2v2 at that time or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, first games you were playing like Jules, like you already had some base of aiming, but it I can imagine that was like absolutely like devastating in the beginning, right? It was super hard to start the game because, like, I mean, there's yeah, it was... you get into the scene so late and there are so many people like grinding the game. Like, how do you keep uh, being motivated? What, what motivates you? Because, like, I remember when I was 12 and I was starting, or like, I was 11, and I went to the internet club, which was very popular back then because you didn't have internet at home because it was too expensive, but mm. um. I remember I lost to some guy like 30 to zero or something. And for me, I was happy as hell when I get like two frags or something. And I started from like, you know, scratch, like step by step. Like, what's the motivation nowadays? Like, how did you stay so, motivated? I mean, I don't know. There's two kind of things in the back of my mind. Number one is I just really, really wanted to learn as much as I could from it. So I pushed through whatever I had to. But then the second part was the ranked ladder made it much, much easier to kind of go in because... You know, when I first started, like the, the first time I ever touched Duel, right, I was like 1,000 ELO or something. And then um, from there, it was like, it was pretty easy to climb up until like 1,600 for me because my mechanics and like the uh, the way I understood 
because Splicky actually has a lot of transfer value with how map design is and with how kind of like the the gunfight loop. You know, it's like the uh, like knowing when to when to push into someone, when to play defensive, that type of small stuff. That was like some of the stuff I was the best at, so that transferred pretty well. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, it was like I had enough mechanics to carry me up to sixteen hundred comfortably, and then from there, I was at least able to put a dent in someone. Wait, my cat's in the room. It's cool. It's great <laughs> to see. How old is he? Is she? Um, trying to think. Okay. Maybe like five, five, six. Looks awesome. Looks awesome. Um, yeah, your first event was actually KingCon, right? Like last year. Yeah, my first LAN event. LAN yes. event, yeah. Um, I remember the funny thing is like, um, I think the first uh, person I met when I went downstairs, like first day, mm-hmm. uh, was actually your mom, <laughs> I think. Cause yeah, the, was she in the like the booth? Well, not the booth, the, like, the it TV was like, lounge area. Yeah, there was like the, the breakfast area in the hotel because you guys stayed in the oh, same yeah. hotel as me. I went down and there was a woman who asked me about the tournament and I was like, yeah, yeah, like there's quick tournament, etc. And she said, my son going to play it. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's that's crazy. Um, that's probably her then. Yeah. Um, okay. Was um, So in 2022, we still had QPL and like all those tournaments. Rafa mm-hmm. was like very on point and on top. Uh, was Rafa ever like kind of your like idol? Did he have any impact on you since he was also like American and like or who's your like favorite player? Did you follow like the scene like before or you just jumped to the game and you didn't care about anything and you, you kept improving yourself? Um, I definitely say like yes before going into this. I knew who Rafa was. Like he was like the he definitely is in some way kind of like my FPS idol. Mm-hmm. And um, let me think of like, I mean, I definitely, when I started playing Quake and even just in my late split ages, like I was watching, you know, some of like his VODs for how to communicate better for, you know, some ways to think about the game. I remember some other people in Splitgate who had like previous competition in Quake. Um, his name is Arline. He's like a Quake, Quake World player from way long ago. Okay. He sent me like some videos about, you know, the way kind of Rafa breaks down and looks at strategy and improvement on a day-to-day basis. And so, like, for a while, I've been kind of watching that type of stuff and mm-hmm. trying to implement it into how I do things. Mm-hmm. But um, also just the way he won, like the way he won a lot of stuff was, of course, a big mm-hmm. motivator in making me look at him. And what was your experience on KingCon last year? Like, the, the whole, like, switch from uh, playing at home and playing online to LAN environment and, like, changing the tables, everything. Like, if you... Because, like, when I'm thinking about you and if you start and then you try to improve your aim, usually mm-hmm. those kind of players, those, those type of players who care about the mechanical skills, I think they are uh, most wonderful uh, when when it comes to switching, like, the the environments. Like, th- they really care about how they sit, like, what's the, the height of the chair, etc. I think... Did you have any problem with that in the beginning, or it all went smooth for you? Um, so actually, I'm a person who's like really tried to condition myself out of that. Like when I went into that focus on aim, I tried to make sure that tiny things like that wouldn't throw me off. So I didn't have much of a, an issue there. My main issue was just because I'd never really gone to a land event before. Like I was perfectly fine with the pressure and with the nerves and all that stuff. But um, when it came to like you know, how the game changes at LAN, I hadn't yet adapted to that, right? Like, I remember Strong Sage was coaching me a good amount of the time, and so he told me a few things, like, you know, at at, uh, at QuakeCon 2020, I think 22, he said, like, the nail was super strong, and other things like that, and I didn't really know exactly how to figure out, okay, this weapon is much different, this champ is bad now, this champ is great now, mm-hmm. right? I just kind of had to... I didn't have a past experience. I had to kind of go through the practice in the group stages as my entire way to gauge it. I think that's the issue with the whole Quake Champions game, because like um, yeah. um, previously in Quake Live, for example, everybody knew that if we are going to LAN, it's usually going to improve your game, because you're going to hit more, everything going to be more smooth, like you're going to have more FPS, like the game will be like nicer. Mm-hmm. And with Quake Champions, it's not necessarily the same way. Like I remember there was some LANs when I'm just sitting and I and I can't hit like any LG it's just like it feels like it's not connecting it's like sometimes like online was better it seems for me that maybe Quake Champions was actually made and developed to be very playable online and like allow us to play between like continents and etc that's why it kind of like you know downgraded on LAN because like literally on LAN like everything could change you could like 
come to the LAN and then you cannot hit anything or like the game works works uh, worse for you or like one champ is good, other champ is not good. So I think it was very beneficial for players, for real grinders who came up like very early and they started to like put a lot of hours into the game and trying to figure out the game from the scratch like after patch. So that's also an interesting part of this game. But okay, so uh, how did King go for you? Like who did you lose to? Like, uh, what was so, the matches? Um, my group, I think, I think I had the opportunity to qualify. Like, say I got a lot of practice and I did it right, mm -hmm. and like uh, everything went perfectly. But um, well, like I had a bunch of pros who I had who were like more beatable than other pros. Mm -hmm. But it was still a really tough group for me. I ended up fifth in my group. Mm -hmm. um, I think my group was. I think it was. Dynamo Joe, Achilles, Slave, then it was Effortless, Nosfa, CNZ, Wenger. Okay, and how did you do? Like, you lost, uh, okay, so you're fifth, so you lost to the pros. Mm -hmm. But yes. I, I think, as far as I remember, you had some, like, close games with uh, some of them. I can't recall, like, which one, but, like, I think in some games it was quite good. It was Effortless or Nosfa, I believe. Okay, yeah. Okay, so after that tournament... Um, you are in a grind mode, like you are in the zone, etc. Mm -hmm. And then we find out that there is no QPL anymore, and there is like a King Con next year, but it's gonna be two v two. So now there is like completely change again, because you started with like a slip gate and with like uh, you know aiming and one v one, and now two v two is also completely something different. Like, what was your thought about it? Like in the beginning, you thought like, oh well, okay. Uh, screw it, I'm just gonna stop like playing at all or you were like motivated to jump on something new and try to play like 2v2 because also in the beginning you were not really like um, I think for you it was very difficult in the beginning to get like good mm -hmm. teammate because like everybody was playing rap already like before because they were knowing each other you didn't know as much people how was it for you? but I remember you also played some tools with Rafa right in the beginning like some um, yes scrims. so I'll kind of go. I'll first, I'll jump into the first part of the question. Mm -hmm. So actually, I and I was really happy when I heard it was two v two because I don't know. As a person, my two biggest strengths, at least going in there at the time, like into Quake, were combat and um, combat and team skills. Mm -hmm. And from Split Gate, I already had those two things. So it's like duel was by far my weakest mode. Like I think okay. if I had to rate my strength in the modes, it would be sacrifice at the top, two v two, and then duel. Right? Because the more like um, the more it goes into that, like for, like uh, the higher player count, the more I'm able to work things I have trained extensively in Splitgate. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when it came to that, I was more motivated, if anything, because Duel actually, out of all the modes, definitely makes me the most frustrated and annoyed. Okay. So and then for the team part, I think um, I mean it wasn't too difficult to find a teammate. I think I had like with those earlier cups, kind of shown that I had a pretty good improvement potential so some people were kind of asking me mm -hmm. but um i think I, I didn't have the same options as everyone else of course like as the pros who've been established for a long time did you start looking for a teammate right away already on king con because i i remember some people who were, were already like pairing up and like teaming up or did you start looking like actively after you went back hmm. went back like went back from the first king con from the king con yeah oh i didn't even I mean, of course, I only heard about it when there was the announcement. So that was like, what, February or something? February, they, January? They they announced it, I think, already on that KingCon. Like, they went up oh. to the stage. But I don't remember if they said 2v2, but I think we all knew it's going to be 2v2, right? I had Actually, no clue until remember. the Twitter maybe, announcement. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think they announced 2v2 League, like, on the stage. Anyway, so you came up with, um, you end up with Faye, with uh, yes. Amadeus. Uh, that's interesting combo because you are very like a combat heavy player and he's also like super like heavy combat uh, player. Um, is it really difficult to have like two people like this and try? How is how is Faye in general? If you have to describe your teammate, like what is he like? Like how does he communicate? Is he only like aiming well and then he lacks other parts of the two v two game, or he's like well rounded and like just describe him if you can. So I would say he's actually very well-rounded. Like, when it comes to communication, I feel like there's not really much of an issue there. He understands the concept of it perfectly fine. He says most of what's needed to be said. Um, I'd say, like, you know, maybe the only difference is it's kind of like the um, the old, you know, when you look at Rafa's team versus when you look at Claus's team and 2v2 things, 
you see, you know, Rafa's team, like, I'm trying to say not as much as possible, of course, but I'm trying to communicate all of, like, the smaller things, like, you know, I'm going here, I see this opportunity, dive on this, right? I'm trying to take the a little bit more of a leader approach mm-hmm. to the way I'm doing things, I'm trying to be a bit more vocal. But um, I would say the way he comes, it's just enough for me to know what I need to do and the, the information is perfectly fine. I have no complaints there. And then as for the other s- sides of our games, I mean, I think we both are just... We both just lack in basic, like, dueling experience and stuff like that. So sometimes we'll, like, like a timer will slip through. But, you know, we're both dueling a lot right now, so we can get ahead on that part. Because, you know, a lot of people have those, you know, 30,000 hours of Quake ahead of us where we kind of are a bit lacking there. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Then you started with Faye, and then there was a little drama with Faye. (laughs) And he cannot play at some point. What were you thinking at that point? Like, you were trying to find a new teammate, or you guys straight away, like, jump on a call and said, okay, Faye, you need to apologize to them, and we keep playing, or, like... (laughs) How was it from your POV? I mean, I just woke up and I saw that and I was like, you know what? It's okay. I'll just, I'll use this as, because the way I like to do things is when I kind of see a team situation that's like a bit rough, I just go, all right, I'm going to use this for the most possible, like the biggest possible benefit to myself with improvement. And so I brought some guy who I knew, who I wanted to, you know, play with in the this next future Splitgate title. And I thought, hey, we could. This could be a perfect opportunity to build up some chemistry, and you know, and if we go, if we take it all the way, and you know, end up going pro in a whole other game, then you know, that's basically the exact perfect training. We've learned a whole bunch of new variables. We've adapted to something. We've built up specific chemistry, and it's really you know, got us to where we need to be when we're waiting for a new game. That's a great approach. Like, congrats. Seriously, like. Thank Some you. people, I think, taking life a bit too serious and they like, you know, getting disappointed too fast. But yeah, that's a great approach. Uh, anyway, yeah, speaking of Klaus, I, I miss him and I miss his uh, 2v2 playstyle. Like, he was extremely good combat wise, mm-hmm. etc. But I remember when he was playing with Kron, he. He didn't speak at all. He was it was the guy who was like probably chilling with some music on and just like casually running around and hitting everything. Okay, yeah. so for the team like you and Amadeus, I'm gonna call him Amadeus because like it's okay. It's what like, you're used to seeing. Yeah. Uh, is it harder for you guys to compete against team as similar to Rafa Maxter or like against Cult Sirius? Because those two are completely two different playstyles. So I mean. I don't know. It, first, the first thing is there's how the game is feeling on the day. Because sometimes, you know, we'll take teams like Rafa Maxter to, you know, we'll take maps off them or we will take it really close. And then other days we'll just lose by 20. Or not by 20, but like we'll have 20. And it's kind of just a little bit rough sometimes. But we've also practiced against them enough that, you know, we kind of understand the way their gameplay loop works and, you know, how they are at their peak, how they are when something's going wrong, all that type of stuff. And so, you know, we've had like, I mean, also, I think we've played them maybe five times in different tournaments. Like, we keep running into them. Okay. Um, and, I mean, we've had two series where it's gone to map three. So I'd say we have a little bit more success when it comes to playing with them or playing versus them. And then when it comes to cheaters, I mean, I'd say our game plans are pretty similar, right? Like, where I'm, pre- I'm like, the Celts of uh, our team and yeah. Faye's, like, the Sirius of our team. Mm-hmm. But, um... We kind of just have less experience playing them. We haven't really scrimmed them ever. And so it's 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 really on the day for them on and how I, we're playing, how our energy is. I also think you guys are a little bit more aggressive and like uh, you yeah. maybe care a little bit more about items and like with with cults and Sirius it's like a bit different because like I see cults fighting all the time on item and Sirius is like just hanging around the item somewhere, mm-hmm. just dealing the damage, etc. Okay, so... Um, you started KingCon like 2v2 league. It was quite rough in the beginning, but then you very quickly improved. Like, I'm mm-hmm. speaking about the last month KingCon. You you came to the top five, top four. 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 Yeah. So that that's a huge improvement. Uh, mm-hmm. Did anything specific happen during that time or last month during the practice? Because sometimes you know, like I remember, like. Um, Back in the days, like in 1v1 tournaments, we were sitting in hotels sometimes with Cypher and he was like, and there was like just little thing you need sometimes to change. Like everything is the same, but you're changing just little thing in your game. And then out of sudden, everything is much easier. You just, I don't know, just some some like little thing. Yeah, For example, I'm just going to use like more LG 
because it's like constant mm-hmm. damage. Like with rocket, like when I'm switching to rocket, I'm missing and then I'm losing time. I'm just gonna use more LG. You just like switch it in your mind and then the game is completely different for you. Did something like this happen, or it was like slowly like grinding the game? Like what what do you think like you guys were working on last month before that? Impact? So I mean. It's more of like that grinding the game approach. I think because we lack that experience. Like one thing I've, I said, like I've been saying to Faye a lot uh, since early on was, we're a team that's like, we'll be much better by the time the tournament rolls around, and we'll be a team that uses the time the best if we just play consistently, right? Like I've noticed when we're playing consistently is when we're taking the most maps off of teams, and when we're getting that practice, we're you know. We're upping on our experience, so then we're able to compete with the people who either have played for a long time or aren't just kind of aren't playing as much at the current moment. And um, I mean, because of that, it's like okay, our up in the game was mostly kind of just a, a motivation like spurt where we ended up playing a lot, and then you know we just had a good day. Okay, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't anything really complex about a new addition to our game. We just got more comfortable with it and with each other. What I'm afraid of. Um... Now, uh, how is the set situation looking in the King Kong uh, like um, placements? Because like top eight teams are going to King Kong finals, right? Do you guys? Um, no, you... they change it. It's uh, so it was top eight, and then there was like a top eight qualifier for the other sixteen. But then they changed it to top fourteen qualify, and then the the two last two were like a tournament organizer invite or something. All right. So there is actually a... very high chances that you guys are gonna go to the LAN, right? Because what's your What's your like uh, placement at the moment in the final bracket? So right. because of that fourth, actually, like I thought the points were going to be an issue, but we are right at like thirteen, fourteen because of that, and then we're going to have this next tournament to get more points. Okay. So yeah, so hopefully you guys are gonna get there. There's also yeah. some reimbursement, like some financial support for the tickets, mm-hmm. uh, which is very difficult for you because you are living in the US and like you know booking last minute will be very expensive. I think so. Hopefully that's gonna work out. Are you guys planning to maybe um, travel to Europe earlier and maybe boot camp somewhere or like I know Sirius is going to like uh, Barcelona earlier help set up the event with Maxter. Maybe they could let you guys like practice there like a few days before. Did you plan anything like that, or you're just gonna um, do it no, go? just gonna go on the day. All right. Okay, Chenzo. Uh, that's it. Um, that's yeah. all I wanted to ask you. I, I appreciate your time, and um, I think a lot of people start to follow you guys, especially after that last month. I think that was a huge surprise for everyone, and now everybody gonna keep an eye on you. That's why we're also making this podcast because it's like it's super good to have like new names like around and like there is like more competition, etc. So I really hope you guys gonna make it to the LAN and then like improve even more from now on. And it's it was nice to have you on my podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you.